This is Caesar's De Bello Gallico, Liber Primus, chapter 1. So the first book, first chapter, at the very beginning. You should always start off Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic War by looking at a map of Gaul. So here is Gaul, Gallia, right here, modern-day France, and the surrounding territories. So we have northern Italy over here, the Alps form right here, the boundary between Gallia and Italia. Here are the Pyrenees Mountains down here, forming the boundary between Gallia and Hispania. And here we have what's known as the English Channel, and that separates Gallia from Britannia. And then we have the rivers over here, the Rhine, and then the Rhone. Uh, the Rhine separates Gallia from uh, Germania which is inhabited by the Germani, and that's a brief overview. Caesar gets a little bit more in detail in chapter one. Uh, we need to start off with talking about geography, a location, because though this is a work of fiction, and therefore we should start off with t uh, time, we should start off with a place on the timeline, um, an event. Um, instead, Caesar brings us into a place, Gallia. So his account is somewhat timeless, um, at least it, within the bounds of the first chapter. He doesn't uh, give us a specific date of any event until chapter two. So first off, chapter one is just a geography lesson, because most Romans in Caesar's day probably had not visited Gaul, and he needs to describe the area to these people. So they get a sense of the lay of the land, the terrain, because the next several books take place in this setting. So go ahead and read the entire thing because you're going to have to memorize it and recite it for class. Gallia est omnis divisa in partes tres, quorum unum incolunt belgae, aliam aquitani, tertiam, qui absorum lingua celtae, nosra galli appellantor. He omnes lingua institutis legibus inter se differunt. Gallus ab aquitanis carumna flumen, ab belgis matrona et sequana dividit. Horum omnium fortissimi sunt belgae, propta rea quod a cotu atque humanitate provinciae longissime absunt. Minimeque ad eos mercatores saepe commeant, atque Ea quae ad effaminandos animos pertinent important. Praximique sunt Germanis, qui trans renum incolunt, quibuscum continenter bellum gerunt. Qua de causa helveti, quoque reliquos gallos virtute precedunt, quod ferre cotidianis proiliis cum Germanis contendunt, cum aut suis finibus eos prohibent, Aut ipsi in eorum finibus bellum gerunt. And that's all you're going to have to memorize for class, uh, but I'll keep going. Eorum una, pars, quam gallus obtinere dictum est, in itium capit a flumine rodano, continentur garumna flumine, oceano, finibus belgarum, at tingit etiam ab sequanis et helvetis flumen renum, vergit ad septentriones. Belgae, ab extremis Galliae finibus oriuntur, pertinent ad inferiorem partem fluminis reni, spectant in septentrionem et orientem solem. Aquitania agarumna flumine ad Pyrenaeos montes, et eam partem oceani quae est ad Hispaniam pertinent. Spectat inter octasum solis et septentriones. All right, so we start off with Gallia, which will be our focus for the rest of the commentaries. Gaul. Est omnis divisa. Gaul is omnis as a whole, as a totality in its entirety. Divisa, est divisa, is divided into in partes tres, into three parts. Quorum unum. Quorum the relative pronoun, genitive plural feminine, the antecedent is partes tres. So of these three parts, of which unam, and that is one part, so unam partem, we just don't have the noun partem, just the adjective. So one, incolunt belgae. Unam is accusative direct object. 
the verb inkolunt, live, dwell, third person plural, so present tense, because in, by the time Caesar was writing these uh, and publishing them, the Belgae still did inhabit them, and the Belgians still are there. And Belgae, uh, the nominative. That is, uh, you can say Belgians, or you can just say the Belgae. So, quorum unum incolunt Belgae, of which the Belgians inhabit unum, one, one part. Aliam aquitani. Aliam uh, is coordinate with unum, so the Belgians inhabit one. Aliam, another, aquitani, and you have to supply the verb incolunt. So, another, the aquitani, the aquitanians inhabit. Uh, aliam is standing in for secundum. And we have tertiam, so the third partem, part. Qui ipsorum lingua celtae nos ragalli appellantur. That whole thing, that qui uh, relative clause right there, is all one subject. And that is the subject of the last iteration of incolunt. So, and the third, and qui, those who uh, appellantur, they are called, they are named celtae. Nom, a predicate nominative, agreeing with qui, those who are called Celts, ipsorum lingua, in the language of themselves, in their own tongue, in their own language, nos ragalli abelantor. But in nosra lingua, in our tongue, in our language, in Latin, galli abelantor, they are named Gauls, they're called Gauls. So they call themselves Celts, we call them Gauls. And they supply incolunt, they in colons live or dwell in the tertium, the third part. So that famous first opening sentence is, Gaul is all divided into three parts, of which the Belgians inhabit one, the Aquitani inhabit another, and those who in their own language are called Celts, in ours are called Gauls, inhabit the third. So those are the three parts of Gauls. Uh, and we'll go over the map as he describes where they are. He omnes lingua institutis legibus inter se differunt. So he omnes, all of these, and the these, the he, hekai kalk refers back to what we just talked about. So the Belgae, the Aquitani, and the Celtae slash Galli. All of these lingua institutis legibus, those are all ablatives, and they're ablatives of specification. Uh, they're describing in what way all of these peoples are different inter se, differ between each other, differ amongst inter se, amongst themselves. This is Latin's way of saying uh, back and forth between each other. So all of these differ between each other in ablative specification in three ways. In lingua, in tongue, in language, so they speak different languages, different dialects. In institutis, so in the setup of their government, their their institutions, um, their governmental practices, and legibus in their laws, in the way that they conduct uh, their legal disputes. Gallos ab aquitanis garumna flumen it is a tendency of students to see the Gallos up front and think that the Gauls are the subject, but pay close attention. That is accusative, so it's the, going to be the direct object of the verb at the end of the sentence. So the Gallos, the Gauls, direct object, something's happening to them. Ab aquitanis, uh, ab, separation or personal agent. Here it's going to be separation plus the ablative aquitanis from the aquitani. So we've got the Gauls, we're going to do something to them, and we're going to move them away from the aquitanis, from the aquitani, and garumna flumen, and there's your subject. Garumna flumen is the subject of the verb that is delayed, and it, at the end it's deweeded. So... The Garumna Flumen, you can keep the Latin uh, names if you want, or you can translate them. So the Garon River uh, divides the Gauls, the Gallos, the direct object, ab Aquitanis, from the Aquitani. So the Garumna Flumen stands in between the Gauls and the Aquitanians and divides the Gauls from them. Rivers form great natural boundaries. Abelgis Matrona et Sequana duidit, and those are two rivers, the Matrona et the Sequana Flumina, Flumina being implied, and the Matrona and the Sequana, that's the Marne and the Seine, they divide the Gallos, got to supply the direct object, Gallos again, a Belgis, from the Belgians. So the Garumna River divides the Gauls from the Aquitanians, and the Matrona and the Sequana divides them from the Gauls, 
where, or I'm sorry, from the Belgians, where the Gauls are the accusative direct object of um, Duedit. It's just they're separating them from both the Aquitani and from the Belgians. So let's look at these rivers. We have the Garumna Flumen down here. Garumna Flumen, it Duedit the Gallos, Celtae, Seaway, or if you like, the Gauls. They're right there, Celt slash Gauls divides the Gauls right here from the Aquitanis. Aquitania is right down here. It's this little sliver down here. So Aquitania is there. Gallia proper, full of Celts slash Gauls, are here. And then we said that the Matrona and the Sequana, so the Sequana is right here, up near the north, where uh, the Parisi, modern-day Paris is, and Matrona right there. So that divides the Gallos, the Gauls, from the Belgae, the Belgians, up in the north. So we have Belgae, we have Celtae slash Galli, and we have Aquitani. Belgians, Gauls, Aquitanians, and their rivers. Horn Omnium, uh, just the genitive version of he omnes, of all of these. Fortissimi sunt Belgae, horum omnium being a partitive genitive. So fortissimi sunt, we are saying that the Belgae are the bravest, the singular superlative, the bravest, the most, uh, the most strong horum omnium of all of these. So out of all of these, the Belgians are the strongest. And they are the ones, of course, Belgae in the north. They are fortissimi sunt, the strongest, proptarea quote, especially because... A cultu, ablative of separation. A plus the ablative cultu, from, separated from the culture, atque, atque being a souped up et. And also, and even the humanitate, the, uh, we get the word humanity, you can see humanities in there, humanitas, humanitatis feminine, uh, culture, civilization, it's what makes humans human, as opposed to uh, the other animals culture and civilization and also the civilization provinciae of the province and we're talking about the roman province here and the part of france in the south is still today known as provence after the provincia romana so that's where the romans uh, set up shop very early on in their history and as it was besides sicily one of the first provinces uh as the of the empire they just called it uh colloquially the province like because that was one of their early ones so you know that one the one that we had before they got you know all the others uh, you can see down here in the south Massilia modern-day Marseille that started out as a Greek colony and the Romans were called upon by the Greeks to join forces with them to help fight the Ligurians the Romans indeed did so and uh, helping the Massilian Greeks stay in business they decided also that they would just so they went over to let's see Narbo. Where are you, Narbo? Narbo is right here. So Narbo competes with Massilia. Narbo being the um, the Roman version of Massilia. So the Belgians are the uh, longissime absent. They are the furthest. Absent, absent or away from the culture and the civilization the civilizing influence of the province meaning the roman province so this place in the south right here with with greek colonists and roman colonists setting up their trading posts and merchants going out uh, from the south to the north in all directions uh, it brings a humanitas caesar says a civilizing influence to all these barbarian tribes, these savages. Uh, of course, it's a very Roman-centric view. Minimeque, uh, we have our first que, so minimeque. Minime being the adverb uh, goes along with saipe, because remember, adverbs commodify adverbs. So minime saipe, least often, ad eos mercatores. Uh, least often do merchants colmeant, uh, commerce, go with, uh, go towards, travel to, ad eos, to that, meaning to the Belgians. Least often do merchants travel to the Belgians. Remember, he's giving the reasons as to why the Belgians are considered fortissimi, the strongest out of all the tribes. And it's propterea quote, especially because, causal clause, they're furthest away from 
the culture and the civilizing influence of the, the province. Least often do merchants come to them, visit them, uh, traffic with them, truck with them. Atque and, and also ea, ea quae. So we have ea and it's answered by the relative quae. Ea is accusative plural neuter and it just means the things and then it's answered by quae, which. So it's like, what things? Well, the things which, quae. Ad effaminandos animos pertinent important. So the relative clause uh, quae ends with pertinent, the things which pertain, that go along with uh, ad effeminandos animos, uh, effemini effeminizing, uh, effeebling, making weak uh, the soul, making weak their souls. So least often do merchants uh, traffic with them and important, import ea, the things which pertain to weakening, enfeebling the soul. So these luxury goods, this humanitas that the, the province has, has a side effect of it makes people less edgy. So it makes kind of relaxes people. It's, there's this Roman idea of the civilizing influence of luxury goods and that these savage barbarian tribes who live in the north, they've never seen things, these luxury goods, and so therefore they're rougher, they're tougher. They don't have time to deal with, with perfumes and scented oils and things because they're too busy wielding double-bladed battle axes and heaving them into each other's heads. And uh, the last reason why they are the fortissimi sunt is proximique sunt germanis, and they are proximi. Proximus aum usually takes a dative with that adjective. Described that they are nearest or closest, it is also superlative. And they're closest to the Germans, Germanis, and there's your dative. A relative clause explaining who they are, qui trans reinum in colunt, the Germans who live across the Rhine. This will be a usual relative clause refrain when we talk about the Germani. Germani, qui trans reinum in colunt the guys who live across the Rhine, you know, the scary bugbears that you guys are so terrified of. Quibuscum. Uh, quibus is another relative linking back to the uh, antecedent Germanis, just like qui does, only this is the ablative and it has the cum attached post-positively, so quibuscum. With whom, and it's um, going with bellum gerunt, with whom they wage war continenter, continuously, with conteneo, without end. They just keep going on and on and on. And they are closest to the Germans who live across the Rhine and with whom they con consistently, constantly wage war. So the three reasons why the Belgians are the strongest amongst all these tribes is they are, let's go to the map, longissime absunt. So the Belgians up here are furthest away from the Provincia Romana, from the cultu atque humanitate, the culture and the civilized influence of the province. So they're the furthest away. So least often do the merchants, the mercatores who come from here, least often do the merchants go to them because they have a long way to go and it's very dangerous up here. And also, as Caesar says, they live closest to the Germani who qui trans reinum in colon, who live across the reinus flumen, the Rhine. So the Belgae are here, and right across the river are the, the Germani, who do like to cross the river and make raids and incursions into the Belgians' territory. They do the same thing to the poor little Helvetians down here. Speaking of, qua de causa helvetii quoque, Reliquus gallus virtute praecedunt. So qua de causa. Uh, de is what you should translate first. The qua goes first because it's the relative. Concerning, concerning which reason? Because of which thing? For which reason? The helveti, uh, the which reason we're talking about is the one that was just uh, recently given, that living in close proximity to the Germans will probably make you uh, swole because you have to constantly fight them because they will constantly fight you. If they kill you, you are obviously weak, but if you survive and get to fight uh, the next day, then you are obviously strong. That's why the Belgians are strong. This is qua de causa, for which reason, pretty much the same reason, the helveti, quoque, quoque modifies the word that precedes it. So the Hel Helvetians, the modern day Swiss, also, quoque, also, they too, praecedunt, 
proceed. They go before, they outstrip or surpass the reliquos galos, the remaining Gauls, the rest of the Gauls. And in what way? Just like we had the Abodos of Specifications, Lingua, Institutis, and Legibus up here, here we have Virtute, another Abodos of Specification, identifying in what way the Helvetians surpass the rest of the Gauls in their valor, in their manly martial courage. You can see the root of Virtus is Vir, their manliness for which reason the Helvetians also surpass the rest of the Gauls in manliness. And then, of course, Caesar is good at explaining things. Quote, because ferre, ferre is an adverb that is equivalent to pine, so it's nearly or almost, quotidianis proilis, in daily battles, in nearly daily battles, cum germanis contendunt, they strive, struggle, contend with the Germans in nearly daily battles. For which reason the Helvetians also surpass the rest of the Gauls in manliness, because in, they strive with the Germans in nearly daily battles. So your parents would wake you up in the morning and say, come on, son, we've got to go fight the Germans. The Germans would invade your homeland and you would have to defend against the Germans. The next day your parents would wake you up and say, come on, son, we've got to go across the river and make a raid on the Germans' territory. You would do this daily, every single day, back and forth, trading blows with each other. Uh, cum aut suis finibus eos prohibent, aut ipsi in eorum finibus bellum gerum. The cum here, this is your first uh, in the wild cum clause. So it is not cum uh, plus ablative preposition with, this is cum meaning when, since, although, and it means when. This is purely cum temporal. So temporal cum with the uh, indicatives prohibent and gerum. They're further modified by the correlative conjunctions aut. There's Number one, out suis finibus eos prohibent, out ipsi in eorum finibus bellum gera. So we have out either, out or. Cum, when, either, suis finibus eos prohibent, and the pronouns become important here. The subject are the helveti. They're still the subject of uh, praecedunt and contendunt and prohibent and gerunt, all third person plural presence. So when the Helvetians either prohibent, keep the accusative plural direct object eos, that stands in for the germanos, the Germans, when they keep them, suis finibus, ablative of separation, from their own, and we have the suis, the reflexive, suus um, and that refers back to the Helvetians. So we use the reflexive, you should be able to circle a reflexive, draw an arrow back to whatever the subject is, Whoop, there it goes, and we're referring to the Helvetians, the Swiss. So when either they, the Swiss, keep them, the Germans, from their own Swiss territory, borders, or they themselves, meaning the Swiss, the Swiss themselves, bellum gerunt, wage war, bring war, in eorum finibus, in uh, wage war in the territory of them, meaning in their, the Germans' territory. So we use uh, eos and eorum, forms of is, ea, id, to refer to the other guys, the Germani, and the subject gets uh, a reflexive, suisaum, suis finibus, and also an intensive, emphatic, ipse, ipsa, ipsum, in ipsi. So, the Helvetians here, and they are hemmed in on all sides by some sort of natural terrain. They also as Caesar just said, live very close to the Germans. So the Germans are just right over here. The Germans make daily incursions on Helvetian territory, just like they do to the Belgae. Belgae follow suit, and the Helvetians do as well, constantly making incursions in um, German territory as well. All right. Eorum un pars. Go ahead and ignore this comma right here. I'm not quite sure why the editor decided that that should go there. Eorum una pars. Quam gallus obtinere dictum est, initium capita flumine rodano. Here he's going to give some further geographical layout of the land. So, eorum, una part. So, one part of these, meaning of all these peoples and parts and all these things that we talked about, quam gallus obtinere dictum est, which, the antecedent of the relative quam is pars, which dictum est, which has been said the that the gallus obtinere, uh, Quam is the direct object of obtinere. Dictum S kicks, kicks us into an indirect statement, which it has been said that 
indirect statement, the gallos, subject of the indirect statement, uh, which the Gauls are said to, uh, to possess, to, to have hold of. So the galli obtinent, uh, this one part. And that part which the Gauls are said to possess, in itium capit a flumine rodano, it takes its beginning, or it takes its head, it takes its lead, or it, you could just say it starts from the flumine rodano, from the Rhone River, the Rodanus River, it continentur garumna flumine, it is contained, it is you know, passive voice, hemmed in or bound by the Garumna or the Garon River. And then notice no conjunctions, just like up here with the lingua institutis legibus, no conjunctions here linking these. We call that asyndeton for the Greek for lack of connectives. So there's no ets or quays or ox or otques, no connectives. We call that asyndeton. The opposite of asyndeton is polysyndeton, meaning lots of connectives. So it is contained by the Garumna flumen, by the Oceano, by the ocean, Finibus Belgarum, by the territory, by the borders of the Belgians. It atingit etiam. We're still talking about um, this one part which uh, contains the Gauls. It even atingit touches on, reaches from Sequanis et Helvetis flumen renum. So it reaches even to the flumen renum, to the Rhine River, ab Sequanis et Helvetis, on the Sequani and the Helvetian side. Verget ad septentriones. And it verget, it faces or opens up towards, I would even just say it lies towards the north, towards the septentriones. So it lies towards the seven the seven stars that make up the Big Dipper, which is in the north. So it opens up or lies towards the seven. And here is the map. So get our bearings. So this one part, which is said to contain, uh, the said that the Gauls possess, so this part in the middle right here, it starts in Itium Capit from the Rhone River, the Rhone River being right here. Oh, I'm sorry, the Rhone River being right here. So it starts here, and it continentur garumna flumen. It is contained by the Garumna River. So it starts here, goes down here. It's contained by the Garun, Garon River right here. It is bound by the Oceano, the ocean, so the Atlantic right here. And by the Finibus Bergarum, so up here, and then it will go up to the Sequana which is the territory of the Belgians. At Tingit Etiam Absequanis, and it even goes to the Rhine River, so Matrona even goes to the Rhine River right here, up to the Sequani and the Helvetian side. So he means up to here. Their territory does not extend beyond the Rhine, it extends to right here. Cool, so this is the territory of the Belgians as outlined by Caesar. I'm sorry, the territory of the Gauls is outlined by Caesar. Now we move on to the Belgae. The Belgians, Belgae, ab extremis Galliae finibus oriuntur. Uh, orior is a deponent verb, so it looks passive, please translate as active, that's present tense. They rise, or you could even say they originate, which that word comes from orior. They originate, they rise, from the extremis finibus Galliae, from the furthest uh, reaches of Gaul. So they originate from the furthest territory of Gaul, so way up here, that's where the Belgae come from. They pertinent, they pertain, reach, or stretch, ad inferiorem partem fluminis reni, do they stretch to the lower part, the inferior, the low part, of the Rhine River, the lowlands or the Netherlands. So that's the low lowlands as opposed to um, the highlands of um, the Rhine. Spectant in septentrionem et orientem solem. And they, meaning the Belgae, they look out towards the septentrionem, the north. So they face the north et orientem solem. Uh, 
the Orion Sol, that means that the sun is Orion's rising, with Orientem being the same verb as Oriuntor, so Orior and Orior. The Orient, the land of the rising sun, the east, that's where the sun Orior rises. So over here, the Belgae, they face towards, they face over here towards the northeast. Aquitania, uh, Garumna flumine, ad Pyrenaeos montes, uh, et eam partem oceani quaest ad Hispaniam partinet. So Aquitania pertains or stretches or reaches from the Garumna flumine, from the Garonne River, to the Pyrenees Mountains, so Garumna flumine right here, to the Pyrenees Mountains right here, Et eam partem oceani quae est ad Hispaniam, and that part of the ocean which is towards Spain, and that part of the ocean right here which is on the Spain side. So, bound by the Garumna Flumen, by the Pyrenees Mountains, and by that part of the ocean which is on the Spain side right here. Spectat inter ocasum solis et septentriones. And it, Aquitania, it looks out or it faces the Ocasum Solis. If the Orient Sol is the rising sun, the Orient, the east, the Ocasus Solis, that is the uh, the dying or the setting of the sun, the, Ocas the Ocasus, that's the west. That's where the sun sets or dies. So the Aquitania looks out or faces the west and the north, so the northwest. So it goes whoop, northwest. Spectot looks out that direction. All right, so once again, to recap, we have the Galli here. They call themselves the Celtai. We have the Belgae up here. We have the Aquitani here. We have the Garumna Flumen, which divides the Aquitanians from the, or divides the Gauls from the Aquitanians. We have the Sequana and the Matrona River, the rivers which divide the Gauls from the Belgians. Here we have the Rhine River, and across the Rhine River live the Germani, the Germans. Here we have the Helveti, Belvicians, the modern day Swiss. Down here we have the Provincia Romana, the Romans, and their province. And here we have Spain and Britain and Italy. So make sure you review this map and get your bearings because we'll constantly be referring to it.